I'm on part three now of my Magneto repair and rebuild. Uh, and in my last two videos, two parts which I've shown you, I was repairing my me, me body on my Magneto cosmetically. And, uh, that was in part one and two. And I've I shown you how I use that Q-Bond to do the repair. So that's part one and two. Now... I did another series of videos on actually doing the rewind if, if, if anybody's interested in that and I made a coil winding machine for my Myford lathe so if you're, in, if you're interested in that that's a nine part video and where I'm up to now on part three of this I think I said last time that I'd, I'd, I'm waiting for my parts to come which I'd ordered they've now arrived and I've got I've got new bearings for both ends, earth brush, slip ring bushes, a new slip ring, and a bright spark easy cap condenser, which I've never used before. Now this condenser fits on front of your points, so I won't be using uh, the existing condenser, well I won't be using that anyway because it's no good. But I won't be putting one in the back of the points. So where I'm up to now is... I'll just show you that condenser. That's in back. Now I shall be leaving that condenser in. Because I think by taking that out... It's taking quite a big lump of material out. And it, it might make me magneto out of balance. I'm not sure how they balance if they balance these up or not. But if you look on this armature... It looks as though there's bits of turning if, you, if, you, if I can call it turning where they've took like grooves out on edge now I don't know whether that would act to balance it or whether it's just how it was made originally I don't know so I shall be leaving that in um, now where I'm up to I've just I've just removed the bearing off of this I've already done that and I made this puller for taking this bearing off because it's pretty tight so I've got that uh, inner race off of, of that bearing and on the other end you have to take the inner race off before you strip it anyway to uh, to strip it down so I've got my bearings off um, now where am, I, where am I up to I've just, I've just put the outer shells of the bearings into the into my rebuilding of the mag magneto I've put the, a new oil ring in I've already done that that just slots in, and I've put a new outer bearing in, which is same as this one on that side. And on this outer bearing, they have to be insulated. And this is what Lucas used, uh, a fancy insulating washer. Now you can buy them, but what I've done, I've copied around the old ones, and I've made two new ones out of this uh, Nomex paper, which I had. To do me armature rewind, so I've made I've made two new insulating washers, and I don't know if you can see them. They're already they're already fitted there. So I've got my outer bearings in, and where I'm up to now, then I've just got to uh, cut these wires on me armature, which I've rewound to get me point center on. That's got to go on there. And then this has got to be cut down to an appropriate size to fit into the slip ring. And then on the other side, this side will just go to earth, original earth, where, where the old condenser went to. And then this one won't attach to old condenser. This just, I've just got to solder these two wires together and tie so they fit into that back case. Because we're, not, we're no longer using that. I'm going to be using this easy cap condenser in front of my points so that's where I'm up to I'll update you when I've when I've done a little bit more I've got my wire soldered on now onto the, onto the uh, end of the armature I'll just show you this before I assemble it together uh, I've this yellow wire here that's soldered onto the earth of me, where my original condenser went to and then the other wire if you remember 
that's where the two wires are soldered together because I'm not, I'm not using this old condenser now so they're just soldered, soldered together and insulated and then that link wire comes through to the point center that's how soldered cut to length and soldered on and then I've cut my me, uh, me secondary high tension wire I've cut that to length and then everything's now ready to be fitted together like that it does go on and then my slip ring will be ready to accept that secondary wire then that ring goes on and then my bearing is ready for going into the end here I've got my bearing fitted to this end and now it's all ready for going back into the body now before I strip this armature down if you remember in my, my previous videos I did a, a series on armature winding now to strip this, old, this armature down I took some measurements of the lengths of the wires so that I could duplicate them on this one and make it easy for me to assemble it together then without having to do a bit, do any guesswork and I did a bit of a sketch and I'll just show you the lengths of those wires uh, if you can see this bit of a sketch I did this is the points end and this is the condenser end and I've put all the dimensions on what those wires how long they was so I could just duplicate them on this one and then everything would fit back together um, more easily if that helps. right then I think I'm now ready for assembling it all together so probably the next time I'll, I'll do a video is when I'm starting to make my test rig for my lathe and then uh, we'll take it from there so I'll catch you again when I'm up to that stage just before I go I just wanted to mention this um, when I got my new slip ring I put my multimeter on in the hole here to, to see if I could get a reading from the with the brushes rub and I found out that I wasn't getting a reading now I know you can't see down the hole but there's a tiny hole goes through and it, it, and it, it goes onto this brass slip uh, this brass slip ring now I couldn't get a, a reading from that hole now I I'm, I'm new to doing that, these magnetos. I've never done one before, and it's the first time I've ever done it. Now I don't, I don't know if, if, if that hole in there should it should be contact. Well, I know it should be contacting this brass, but mine wasn't. Whether it's because the spark jumps through that, I don't know. But I wasn't going to risk it, and maybe an expert out there will be able to tell me this. So what I carefully did. I carefully got a, a 0.8 drill, which is the same size as my wire, or maybe a fraction bigger, and I just gradually worked my way through till I got my drill <clears throat> through to this brass pickup here. Now, I don't know whether I've done right or wrong by doing that, but I, I wasn't prepared to, to not have a contact there. Now maybe the wire jumps that, I don't know, but somebody out there will be able to tell me that perhaps. Anyway, that, I thought I'd just tell you that, just in case, because I didn't want that wire to be isolated from that. So, I'll just uh, throw that one into the melting pot for you, and I'll catch you on my next video at my test rig.